pleasant good morning to you all, our faculty, families, and friends, and especially our graduates. Welcome to the School of Canon Laws 2022-2023 Diploma Ceremony. It is a great privilege and pleasure to welcome you all today in this beautiful garden. And to all those, well, to all those joining us online, I think we're being recorded, to celebrate the achievements of our graduating class, welcome. My heartfelt congratulations to our graduate for their accomplishments. You have reached this milestone here today because of your dedication and hard work and because of all the people you re related to who helped to keep you going, your family, your friends, your colleagues, our faculty and staff. Let's take a moment to thank them for standing by you during the ups and downs along the way. So thank you all. We bless God for prospering your journey. To God be all the honor and glory and praise. At this time, I want to pause and take a moment to introduce our distinguished faculty Amazing men of God, wonderful colleagues, brilliant scholars, and a joy to work with. Our Dean and O'Brien O'Connor Chair of Canon Law, Monsignor Ronnie Jenkins. Our senior faculty, the Stefan Kuttner Distinguished Professor of Canon Law, Father John Beale. Our associate professor, the editor of the Juris, a scholarly journal, and the director of our Marriage Tribunal Institute, Dr. Daniel, Dr. William Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> our assistant professor, vice chancellor of the personal ordinariates of Our Lady of Walsingham, United Kingdom, Dr. James Bradley. And our um, oncoming professor, <laughs> who will be joining us this, this fall, Dr. Uh, David Long. He's also an alumni of Canon Law. Welcome. <laughs> Absent today are our professors, Dr. Kurt Martin and Monsignor William King. At this time, I will call upon Father James Bradley to give an opening prayer. seems particularly appropriate as one of the three ecclesiastical schools of the university as our graduates begin their work for the church to pray for the church. And this ancient prayer for the church calls to mind the beauty of the church, but also the need for us to pray and work for its furtherment. Let us pray. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, Look favorably upon thy whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery, and by the tranquil operation of thy perpetual providence, carry out the work of man's salvation, and let the whole world feel and see that things which were cast down are being raised up, that those which had grown old are being made new, and that all things are returning into unity through him by whom all things were made, even thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Bless God. At this time, the dean will give an address, and it will be followed by an address by one of her latest graduates, uh, Daniel Whittam. And you may come up immediately following... Uh, the Dean. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you all. And I would like to introduce to you our esteemed assistant dean, Ms. Grace Ann Lewis, who is not only the MC for today's event, but also uh, the very hardworking person responsible for everything you have here. So thank you very much, Grace Ann, for all of this. 
you have heard two speeches today, so we need one more to make it a perfect <laughs> biblical three. So here we are. Dear graduates, fellow faculty, esteemed assistant dean, honored guests, and dear friends, it is my great pleasure to welcome you to the 99th commencement ceremony of the School of Canon Law taking place during the celebration of the 100th anniversary of the establishment of our faculty on April 11th, 1923. Canon Law was taught at Catholic University even before a school was established. In December 1890, Mr. Miles P. O'Connor donated funds to establish the first chair of Canon Law providing the chairholder with an annual salary of $2,500. With a chair established, the rector of the university, Bishop John Keane, had to find a first professor of canon law. He traveled to Rome in hopes of bringing one back with him. But the rector of the North American College in Rome convinced Bishop Keane that choosing a Roman for the job, quote, would bring into our midst an enemy, a spy, a meddler of most dangerous character. For such, he said, would surely be a man in Rome in that line of study. Well, after a couple of false starts and a bad choice or two, the teaching of canon law eventually got underway at our university. It was not until 1906, however, that the Board of Trustees established a separate department of canon law within the School of Theology. It was only then that canon law degrees were offered as a distinct discipline. Since there was only one professor of canon law, the students took only five hours of classes a week. The first baccalaureates were awarded to three students in 1907, 11 in 1909, and in 1910, 13 graduates received baccalaureate degrees, five of which went on to learn to earn the first licentiates in canon law granted in 1912. And the rest, as they say, is history. A history that has seen monumental events and changes in the world and in our nation, our university, and our school. Today, we have students from all parts of the world, from wonderfully diverse cultures and backgrounds, lay women and men, women and men religious and diocesan priests. The same is the case with the professors serving on our faculty or assisting us with course instruction. Most importantly, our alumni continue to make truly significant contributions to the life and ministry of the church. Obviously, 100 years is a very short time span in the life of the Jus Canonicum. We know well that the great medieval canon lawyers were fond of insisting that canon law, at least as embodying divine law, arose first in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve got into a bit of a strife and God intervened to pass judgment. As a medieval canonist, Stephen of Tournai concludes, the process of litigating or commonly of pleading, seems to have arisen in paradise. I don't know if anyone having been involved in a lawsuit would agree that that was an issue of paradise. Of course, many more jurists, both Christian and Jewish, agreed that the more likely origin of God's law was the great prophet, lawmaker, and judge Moses. In any event, over these many centuries, the wisest and truest things concerning the law and how best to practice it have never changed. I would like to conclude my remarks with a bit of advice from a canon lawyer who practiced in the 12th century and whose words ring true today as they did 100 years ago at our school's founding and 1,000 years ago when they were first spoken. In the brief preface to his breviary on or the first of five of the compilations to, uh, published after Gratian, Bernard of Pavia offers this simple advice to canon lawyers. Sit itaque juris peritus in concilio cautus, in patrocinio fidelis, in judicio justus. One truly skilled in the law should therefore be cautious in counsel, faithful in advocacy, and just in judgment. 
We canon lawyers are cautious and prudent when giving legal counsel because while the law may often seem clear to us, the situations we apply it to rarely are. Life and lives can be truly complex. One size will never fit all. And so we must grow always in our insight, patience, openness, and eagerness to apply the law to an untold set of facts and circumstances, striving always to bring about the law's supreme good, the salvation of souls. We are not only cautious in counsel, we are also, also faithful in advocacy. Most people do not look forward to hiring a lawyer. It often means something has gone wrong. There is trouble, contention, accusation, or a host of other difficult moments that our clients desperately want resolved so peace might be theirs again. Faithful advocates know this. They provide not only legal support, but more importantly, they accompany their clients in the way of truth. To be faithful to the law is to be true to it, and so too it is with those we serve. We are witnesses to them of the truth that is the source of all law. If not, then we might assist with removing legal conflict, but not with bringing the peace that comes from knowing it is the truth that has won, and so the blessing of peace is ours again. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, canon lawyers must above, above all be just in judgment. Judges are the supreme ministers of justice, for there is perhaps no other function that we fulfill closer to the divine than to sit in judgment, to speak with the authority of the church in order to free the innocent, punish the guilty, declare facts that touch directly on the lives of the faithful, and to protect the rights of all. It is this last charge to protect the rights of all that through the centuries has remained the most difficult to realize even for judges, but it is the most critical for us as canon lawyers. In 1952, at the University of Tübingen in Germany, a little known lecture was delivered that I consider to be one of the most significant lectures ever offered at an academic gathering. The lecturer was the celebrated theologian Romano Guardini, and the title of his lecture, which he told his audience in advance, was certainly to make them uncomfortable, was one word, responsibility. The powerful thoughts he shared that day were framed by these words, justice exists absolutely for every person as such, or it does not exist at all. This, my fellow canon lawyers, is the sacred charge we have been given to witness to this truth, that our practice of the law will serve justice from beginning to end without respect of persons, whether we are giving counsel, advocating for a client, or sitting in judgment, or we will not be practicing the law at all. We are not only priests of justice, to use a phrase of the Emperor Justinian, but we are witnesses to its absolute necessity in a world that yearns constantly for it and on behalf of a church whose mission is to bring God's justice to that world. For this, I assure you of my prayers, and together with all my colleagues here with us this morning, I offer you sincere congratulations and heartfelt best wishes for much success in your ministry as canon lawyers and servants of God's justice and mercy. Congratulations. Thank you, Monsignor. Dear classmates, faculty of the School of Canon Law, family and friends, thank you for your presence here this afternoon to celebrate with us as we close a significant moment in our lives. 
When I began the JCL program three years ago, I took a chance and moved to a new city with no friends or family nearby to start a relatively obscure graduate program, and I am so glad that I did. Looking back, I can only see our Lord's providential hand in everything. I am sure that the friends that I made here at CUA and the relationships with numerous professors and mentors will be a blessing to me for the rest of my life. And I'm sure that all of you, my fellow graduates, can say the same. My classmates have persevered through a strenuous course load, difficult exams, endless thesis revisions, and more than our fair share of Zoom meetings. Fortunately, each of us knew that the grace of God was with us to guide and sustain us during the past several years. Therefore, today is the day to give thanks to our Lord for his care and protection for the blessings we have received, and for his aid in many difficult moments. In the words of the itinerary prayers, he has been to us a help when we go forward, a comfort by the way, a shadow from the heat, a covering from the rain and cold, a chariot in weariness, a refuge in trouble, a staff in slippery paths, and a haven in shipwreck. But as we leave Catholic University today, we also look forward to living out our vocations as canonists. My classmates and I may not know all the details of what the Lord will call us to, but we trust that the education and training we have received here will make us fitting instruments in his hands for the salvation of souls and for the service of his church. All this we can confidently turn and entrust to his mother, Our Lady, the Blessed Mary Ever Virgin, who is our life and sweetness and hope, now and forever. Thank you all, and to my fellow graduates, congratulations. We're moving very swiftly. At this point, <laughs> we're going to be handing out the diplomas. Yes, and, and this year you'll be getting a gift uh, from the school, a beautiful picture um, artwork of the Caldwell Hall. So, with it, yeah, celebrating our 100-year anniversary. Oh, I neglected to mention that. The School of Canon Law turned 100 this year, so we are, <laughs> we are growing, we're, we're established, we're getting older, so that's a blessing. <laughs> and you are, yeah, the graduating class of 100 years, so that's, that's beautiful. Okay, so um, first we're gonna call um, Dawn Goldstein, Sister Thine. Noin. <laughs> Father John Sweeney. Daniel Whitten. <laughs> Father John Maxim. So we're going to, um, at this moment, invite our doctoral student, or doctor, rather, <laughs> our newest doctor of canon law <laughs> to come forward. <laughs> Father Vincent Wu.
So once again, I want to thank you family and friends for coming out to celebrate with us, our newest graduates, or doctor, or JCLs. Um, and at this moment, Father Beal is going to come and give the benediction. Thank you. Good and gracious God, we thank you for this opportunity to honor these graduates of the School of Canon Law. As they go out to practice the law they have been studying here, may they remember that the law, especially Canon Law, is not a club to beat others into submission or a magic wand to make difficulties disappear but a flawed and fragile instrument for promoting the good of souls. May these graduates remember that they do not know everything about the law yet, and that they need to continue their studies. As they move on, keep them humble, give them generous hearts in sharing what they have and what they are with others. We ask this as we ask all things in Jesus' name. So with that, we can now enjoy uh, a reception here. And please uh, make yourself at home. We look forward to meeting all of you. And if you would like any pictures at all with anyone, just let us know. Uh, one more all, and uh, it would be very nice. In fact, we should probably get a group picture anyway, uh, just for the, for the uh, record. So enjoy yourselves. Thank you, Grace Ann. Thank you, colleagues. Congratulations, and let's have a nice time now here. Thank you. <laughs>